even if you keep the Zod storyline, my problems could have been solved by having Clark be in the Superman suit before Zod arrives. People know who Superman is because he's been going around saving people, using his powers to stop criminals, and, you know, maybe even give him a, a brief super bad guy to take out. And seriously, the film should have brought to life that awesome sequence from uh, All-Star Superman where Superman comforts the suicidal girl. That's, that's just... That's a beautiful presentation of who Superman is. Um, it's just a great scene. And why nobody adapted that to the to cinema is beyond me. And really, you can do it with a montage that kind of evokes Superman the movie, much like they did in Superman Returns. And I know you, some people are going to go, yeah, but they've already done that. But it's actually kind of important because it would set up Superman in the minds of the public as a super good guy. And then when Zod does show up, when they have this vicious fight that levels Metropolis, Superman is maybe a little scarier to people. There's still plenty of people who love him and, and are looking to him as their savior. See, this is one of those things where you're kind of setting up a bigger picture. Because that's what they were going for in the follow-up. For one thing, Nolan and Schneider were very emphatic that they were making basically epic, mythic, uh, gods in tights analogies here. That's, that's what they wanted. The, like the Trinity, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. They weren't making mere tentpole popcorn movies like Marvel. And when Nolan was asked about if there'd be a post credit scene to Man of Steel, he was very derisive and said a real movie wouldn't do that. In other words, they're making films. They're making art. And overall, the Man of Steel was a pretty grim affair. Superman is having just a crisis of identity throughout the whole film. Like he's not sure what he wants to be. And in the early part of the film, that's okay where he's still saving people. And yet Man of Steel, he kind of talked in a fashion that Earth was not his home. And I understand, I've had defenders of the film tell me, but it's it's because he's the other and that's, that's what... It, and Superman is the other. Certainly, he's he's super powered. He does come from another planet. But honestly, a lot of times, I mean, in real life, when people find out uh, about heritage or, uh, and they want to learn more about where they come from, they usually don't stop referring to themselves, for instance, as being Americans. They, in large part, still see themselves as Americans, but they're Americans who have a history that goes beyond America. And that's not how Superman talks. He, he talks as if he grew up on Krypton. He spent five minutes on Krypton. And you can still have him be the out-of-place kid. He's adopted. And he's adopted from parents he has no chance of ever truly knowing. That, that works. I don't know, you know, those that that kind of othering makes is is understandable. The idea that he does feel disconnected from humanity at large because he's so much more powerful than everybody else. He could rule, but that's not how he was brought up because his parents are ultimately John and Martha Kent. And then he's tethered further to, to, to Earth by his love for Lois. And that's something I actually thought the film did really well, in spite of the fact that it's the second time we've seen a Lois Lane-Clark relationship that starts with Clark. And I suppose it's debatable there. I mean, if you feel that the traditional love triangle, where she's initially really into Superman and just thinks of Clark as a buddy, certainly that is going to be a problem 
Um, I don't have a real problem with that. And I think Amy Adams and Henry Cavill worked real well together. I feel like it it grew organically. And I mean, I mean, really, the movie's portrayal of Lois is really good. I mean, she's she's a dogged, determined reporter tracking down a story, and she'll do whatever it takes to to get the heart of that story and yet we even see once she finds Clark and hears his side she kind of says wait a second and steps back from the story maybe this is more important than my story and 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 that's something that really was effectively done in the film I really did enjoy that part of it also, I, I still wish they'd have found an alternate solution for Zod. The idea that Superman... The idea that Superman had to kill him. That's a, that's a problem. Zack Snyder defended the choice by saying, by saying the following. The why of it for me was, well... If it's truly an origin story, his aversion to killing is unexplained. It's just in his DNA. And I felt like we needed him to do something. Just like him putting on the glasses or going to the Daily Planet or any other things that you're sort of seeing for the first time. That you realize when you... Er, that you realize will become sort of his thing. Uh, and now I'm going to tell you something. I don't need to commit murder to know that I feel it's wrong. It's not an experience I need to go, maybe murder's bad. And frankly, it doesn't seem to have carried over into the other movies that he suddenly has a code against killing. I mean, tell me this guy actually survived being smashed through multiple walls. I'm sorry. Superman hits him at super speed, knocks him through walls. That guy's dead. As I said, a lot of talk got made that they really beefed up the action due to complaints of Superman Returns being low-key on the action. But that's, as I said, A, that's not true. It had some really spectacular scenes. I agree that I would have liked to have seen a few more of like the, the saving scenes that were really dramatic. Both films kind of misunderstand Superman. They kind of spend their whole movies bummed out and depressed. And... They both kind of miss that ultimately Superman should be inspirational. Even though Singer's version tries for that, um, it doesn't fully succeed at it. And Man of Steel lacks, a, lacks saving other than pretty much this scene. You okay? Again, Superman should be inspirational. And the, the hard part here is I like Cavill. And I also really liked Brandon Ruth. And I felt like it... I, I always felt that Superman Returns' failure to restart the franchise was kind of a bummer in the one sense that Ruth wouldn't get a chance to really make any more of a mark on the role. He just got that one shot. In spite of kind of fair to Midland reviews and some negative reactions, it did make enough money that DC felt comfortable going forward and making a sequel, which was initially just going to be Man of Steel 2. However, DC was kind of looking at the bigger picture thinking we need to get to the Justice League. Man of Steel 2 got pushed down the line. Instead, at the 2013 Comic-Con, they announced Batman v Superman. Dawn of Justice. The plan was to borrow heavily from Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. And they even had Harry Lennox an actor who appeared in Man of Steel come up to the stage at Comic-Con and read a passage from The Dark Knight Returns. In all your most private moments, I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. But what this gives us is a new Batman as an audience. We're meeting a whole new guy. This isn't the Dark Knight, uh, Christian Bale. This isn't Michael Keaton's Batman. It's a whole new Batman. Except we're jumping in 
late in his career, the movie pretty much sets him up to be having been active for over 20 years. And Clark Kent is really trying to push an investigation into the Batman. He thinks the Batman is, you know, this dark vigilante who terrorizes the poor. And that's a perfectly legit, that's a perfectly legit take. And, and we're seeing that Batman has started branding villains, and which is resulting in prisoners getting killed in prison, which is another reason why Clark is really thinking Batman must be stopped. And it all leads to a conflict between the two, because secretly Lex Luthor is playing the two against each other in the most convoluted plot ever, but... Well, okay, maybe not the most convoluted plot ever, but a really convoluted plot. It just... Okay, but back. let's back up. Let's backtrack. The film is also establishing, and they, they have montage of Superman saving people, that there are people almost to the point of worship. And that's a valid take on the story, to... The idea that there are people who don't trust Superman and there are people who trust him way too much. Um, that go beyond him being an aspirational figure for them where anybody could be... Every day that you do a good deed, you're Superman. No, they think he's like the world savior and has to... They're dependent on him. And Lex Luthor doesn't trust that. And that's, uh, again, another valid motivation. But... Because of the first Man of Steel film, it doesn't really get earned. We don't see Superman be like big and heroic outside of his fight with Zod as Superman. It's not like Batman v Superman is taking place ten years later or something. So Superman and Batman are at odds from the start, and... The thing is, is using the inspiration of the Dark Knight Returns in this fashion, it actually kind of undermines the story. And what makes that whole sequence in Miller's comic is Superman and Batman were friends. They knew each other for years, and now their friendship is kind of withered on the vine. Neither trusts each other. Superman doesn't trust Batman because he's operating in the shadows, and Batman doesn't trust Superman because he's working for the government. See, it's tragic because of their friendship. Clark and Bruce don't have that here. Superman and Batman aren't buddies. The film also introduces Wonder Woman as kind of the, the mystery. We all know it's Wonder Woman, but she's a mystery, and she has... No really discernible motive beyond getting a picture, which is just kind of like, huh? Now, the worst part about Luther's plan is it makes both Superman and Batman look like complete suckers. Like, they're, they're, they're... I mean, Batman is supposed to be one of the world's greatest detectives, and yet he's totally confounded and totally played by Luthor. Thank you.